Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Way T. Lightheart from Bioptimizers with another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And today's episode is super awesome. I am surrounded by the ladies in red, and they're going to teach us how to live our most radiant lives through body, mind, spirit, and energy optimization. They are experts in skin health, and they suggest that it starts from the inside out. So we're going to plug in to sell uh, a bunch of things about that, about biohacking, aging well, how to avoid the gimmicks in the skincare and biohacking world. And we're going to talk about Rachel and Katie's top five biohacking and skin care stacks. You know, I never paid attention to my skin enough, paying the price for it now. So I'm really, really excited for today. And of course, if you haven't heard, Rachel Varga and Katie Moore are co-hosts of the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast, which is the ultimate podcast bridging the world's health and beauty. Learn from the greatest minds around the world on how to live a happy, healthy, long life. Look good while doing it at beautyandthebiohacker.com. I don't know. I think of beauty and the beast when I think of myself. And I've got beauty and beauty and biohacker and biohacker. I think you guys are kind of combine both of them. And uh, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. Well, yeah. Thank it's you so much. Both best of both worlds, right? We got myself over here, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures later. We got Katie Moore here, self-proclaimed biohacker. And, you know, this is how this world rolls right now. We meet each other, we connect, we collaborate, and then magic happens. Right, Katie? We've never actually met in person. This all happened sort of, you know, fortuitously in just kind of a reach out on Instagram a year ago, over a year ago. And we just connected and instantly like the energy channels kind of were in sync between us. And so I've learned a lot about skin stuff from Rachel. She's learned a lot about biohacking from me. And I think that is really what it's all about is teaching each other and creating community. So there we have it. We have beauty the biohacker and today i will play the role of the beast as i've (laughs) snuck somehow into this conversation about beauty so let's talk let's let's dive right into it skin this is like a multi gajillion dollar business every woman i know talks about their skin they're worried about their skin they're concerned about their skin They're commenting on other people's skin. They're trying to help me with my skin. Skin is a big thing. And for a lot of dudes, you know, like from my era, like we're completely out of it. We don't know what the hell's going on. And then there's all the younger crowd, which are like, oh my God, did you see that guy on his uh, Instagram? His skin looks so old. Wow, he's old. I'm I'm out. I'm off the note. So can you talk about... Skin, the importance of it. What's it mean? How does it work? What are the do's, don'ts, the ten challenges? Let's get into it. Yeah, well, let's just start with some of the basics. First of all, stay in your own lane, please. If you notice someone has some skin issues, do not be that person that says, are you tired? You look a little tired today. Please do not do that, okay? Let's create this staying in your own lane, but we can tell a lot about the health of individuals when we see them, but keep, but, you know, keep those judgments to yourself. How do you, how do, there's a question. Let's start right there. <laughs> I'm, how do you tactfully communicate about skin? Well, you could say, you know, reach out to Rachel Varga and work with her. Right. But at the same time, no, no, like- what I'm saying is how do you tack? So this is a big issue. I think for women and men in relationships. Like I would say that women are highly conscientious of skin as a general rule and men are not generally as adept. And that's, I know that's categorizing, but if we look at the sales of cosmetic goods, skincare products to women and men, I think that statistics would demonstrate that that's a relatively accurate statement. And I know in my crowd, I have a friend. And he was the skin master. Okay. Like he worked for a pharmaceutical company. He got his guy. He knows everything about skin. And he's like, he used to do all this stuff 15, 20 years ago. Right. And he's doing all this skin stuff. And I'd look at him and I go, dude, what's wrong with you, man? It's like, you're kind of weird, right? You're kind of metrosexual on me here. Right. It was a bro thing. Well, now we're all, I'm turning 50. He just turned 50. And, you know, I go to visit his house at Christmas. I'm like, 
damn, dude, you got good skin. <laughs> I'm looking at my own. I'm like, oh, shit, I think I made some mistakes here. <laughs> Dang, yeah, maybe I, I should have done that. I think it's great to compliment. That's awesome. You know, give, send, and receive those compliments. But uh, like the basics for skin is going to be cleansing morning and night, moisturizing morning and night, mineral, super clean sunscreen every day, exfoliating a couple of times a week. Those are really the basics. But like with you, with, with your products, bio-optimizers, quality matters, right? Making sure there's actives, peptides, antioxidants that are actually going to be feeding the skin from the deep down dermal layers and sloughing off the top more superficial layers. That's kind of like stacked up cornflakes. So if that's all bungled up, like you have leaky gut, you need to just cover the basics first and then everything else will follow. But body, mind, spirit, energy, the biohacking, it really is all part of it. And yeah, happy to answer any more questions. Well, Katie, as a biohacker, right? Mm. How, how, what's, what is the skin perspective from the biohacking community? Cause I think, you know, we've got both of you coming from kind of different backgrounds and, and, and meeting together with both of your expertise. How do you see it? I see it, um, as you take care of the mm-hmm. inner self and you take care of your nourishment and making sure you're properly hydrated, you're eating the right foods. And it's a reflect, like your skin is a literal reflection of what's going on inside of you. I find that when I'm eating the healthiest, I'm getting the right amount of sunlight. And granted, I do live in Hawaii where there is plenty of sunlight all the time. But I also have to realize that like too much of anything, anything good, too much sleeping is going to be harmful on your body, mind, and your spirit and your skin. So I always look at kind of what's going on inside you before I even add any external products, right? So that that's my kind of indication. Somebody's really healthy. They've got glowing skin naturally. Mm. That's a good sign. I think, well, is it, you know, skin, the look of skin is an aspect of desirability and attractiveness. Would you guys agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So and it's a lot of it's genetic too. I mean, I, we can't put that aside. Like as much as you can really work on your skin and there's so many different treatments you can do at the end of the day, you know, your, your skin is kind of part of your lineage. And so you do have to accept who you are in your skin. And yes, there's cosmetic procedures you can do to change a little bit of that, but I think it's the acceptance of this is my skin and this is my outer appearance and my shell that really kind of gets you to stop even thinking so much surface level, right? At least that's my opinion. Well, here's something I got a question for you. So I've always had, I've been lucky with my body skin is looks pretty youthful and young. My facial skin, I noticed in the last few years is starting to get older and more worn. I don't wear sunglasses typically outside. I get my face gets exposed to a lot of sun. And before it was kind of cool to get a little bit of wrinkles. And now I'm looking, I'm like, geez, man, you're starting to look like an old dude. What's going on? What's the difference between body skin and facial skin? Because I think a lot of people are kind of, they have this you know, Instagram kind of face, you know, they're like, that's all we see of them, you know? And so so is there a difference between the skin in our body versus the skin in our face? Absolutely. So when we're talking about things like dermal rolling, microneedling, by the way, there's a lot of free online tutorials out there on how to do it. There's a lot of great free information these days that isn't always the best. I'll just put that out there right now. That's a question. That's the thing. Yeah. (laughs) Free is not always uh, without cost. But there are actually different skin cell receptors on the face versus the neck the chest, the hands, and the rest of the body. So when I'm working with clients, I work with a lot of male celebrities. Guys want to look good too, because they want to make sure that they look just as hot as their their counterparts and all of that. So it's great when when couples can even share products. I actually like to encourage that with my couple clients. Wow. But uh, the, the skin cell receptors are different. So when we're doing dermal rolling, say on the face versus the neck and the chest, we're doing- What's fewer- dermal rolling? Come on, you're dealing with the you're dealing with the beast here. You know, oh, my cool. idea of derma rolling is something like you grab like a barbell and forty five plates. Let's grab some props game here. Game changer. Yeah, I'll let I'll let Rachel kind of grab her derma roller. She has a very expensive one, and I think this is actually. And I'm, I'm sorry to kind of divert the conversation, but I think Rachel should also mention how important it is to get a really good kind of medical grade derma roller because. 
I started with the Amazon $25 one and ended up doing some damage to my face. Uh So Rachel is the expert when it comes to finding the right micro needle blade and the right price point and kind of the efficacy of the brand that you're buying from. So don't be fooled guys on some of the stuff that you're going to find third party. Well, this is great. I'm super excited about it because a number of years ago, my um, <laughs> turns out to be my ex fiance. <laughs> she she started going on about this derma rolling and micro needling and things like that, and I'm standing there going, "What you're doing? What you're needling? You're like, what are you talking about? Maybe that's what caused the split. I don't know, but um, tell us about because she was really onto this, and uh, a lot of people are. What is it? What's what's this derma rolling? So we got we got some good news here. I've been working with clients for dermal rolling for the last 10 and a half years. There's a couple of benefits to it uh, for via the mechanism of collagen induction therapy. It helps to make more collagen in the skin. Uh, we can also puncture the keratinocytes, which is actually what is creating things like Uh, sunspots or age spots, if you will. And to answer the genetic question before, sometimes when we see hyperpigmentation, melasma, those can be indications of detoxification pathway blockages. So the skin tells us quite a bit of what's what's going on, what's the story uh, underneath. So uh, dermal rolling it has been around since the nineties and Dr. Lance Sutterfield, he's actually in the city where I live. I also, uh, am in the same city as Dave Astry. That's how we know each other. And, uh, I'm pretty chummy with his research assistant. So I've basically learned straight from the researchers, horses, mouths of the, the best tried and true research techniques, the right copper peptides, vitamins, retinol, glutathione, vitamin B complex, lactic acid, hyaluronic acids to use with it that are going to be safe and effective for not only trans topical application of a product. So when you put a serum like copper peptide on your skin, that's the topical application. Now the beauty about beauty about dermal rolling is this transdermal application. You're basically creating little channels of injury, much like aerating the lawn, right? You're going on yeah. over the skin. You're very, I know this these channels. Yeah. You have and- to run them. You have to aerate the seed, the, the, the sod. I was a landscaper. So now you're talking my language. Perfect. Except for not using like, like a phosphates here guys. Right. And uh, so basically we're allowing the penetration of products to be about a hundred to a thousand times deeper in the skin. Now there are different types of rollers. There's stampers, there's different depths, Really how I determine which depth and type of roller to start with for my client is going to be based on their skin needs. So that's, that's going to be done through a conversation, but I don't recommend just like Katie, you said, don't get them on Amazon or eBay. So I work with products, uh, companies that have been making rollers since the nineties. These are like the OGs in the dermal rolling space. It's really important because up close, sometimes uh, really low quality rollers. Everybody always asks me about this. I love we're jumping into this. Sometimes up, co- um, up close on low quality products, the needles are actually blades and they're made of heavy metals. So for example, heavy metals can become very toxic to us as well. So we want to make sure that the dermal rollers are made of a specific type of metal and not necessarily an alloy that they are actually needles and not blades. So they're not resting. And so that they don't come out and actually get deposited into the skin. Cause I have heard of this happen. So you just take this thing and you just roll it all over your face, like a lawnmower. <laughs> there is There's a-, a technique. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> But she's not going to give away all her treat secrets. I see. We can, where can we find out more about this from you guys? <laughs> Let's throw that in plug right now about learning how to use the right derma roller and applying the right technique to your derma rolling experience. Trust me, I'd love to give this stuff out for free, but it's actually a liability issue. A couple of years mm-hmm. ago, uh, my colleagues, the top aesthetic docs, nurses, we pulled all of our laser and injectable videos offline because of the issue of DIY and liability. So that's why, trust me, I'd love to give this stuff out for free, but there's a reason for it. And yeah, you can, you guys can all learn how to work with Katie and I at beautyandthebiohacker.com and uh, our one-on-one booking links there, our channels and all of that. You can just, just find that there, but yeah, just, just book a session. I'll go through it with you. Okay. So it's good. So it's good. skin. just, it does good skin mean I just like, 
I just drink a bulletproof coffee and go like this with my roller on my face. And do I look good? Or is there other things that I need to do? Oh my gosh, Katie. No, you, we saw something online right now. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm actually trying to see if you will self combust with my ignorance. (laughs) I don't think anything is wrong in, in doing both of those things um, separately. And But you know, if you're going to be drinking that much Bulletproof coffee, you have to make sure you're also hydrating and you're getting the right do, water source. Do you, rub it on all- your, do you rub the Bulletproof coffee on your face? Or- <laughs> I mean, you can try it and let us know how that works for you, but I would not recommend it okay. to the general all public. Right. So what do you um, recommend? What do we do? What do we need to do? Well, I, I I don't want to speak for all of Rachel's trade secrets, but I will say that there are some very specific things that you want to put on your face. Some some more like higher end kind of um, you know nutrients that you're going to want to replenish some of the the kind of elasticity and collagen in your face post derma rolling. Do not just take you know your your brand like label um, moisturizer that you know you can get for $7. Like that is, you want to like, after you've done this rolling session, you want to put on some really top medical grade products onto your skin because there is a little bit of that surface damage. I would also say stay out of the sun, right? Like immediately after you doma roll, just because, you know, the, the sensitivity of that area is heightened. And so I do it before bed, to be completely honest, and let th- that mm. really great, like those those really nourishing, um, you know, peptides soak into my skin while I'm sleeping and I'm resting. And then I wake up in the morning and look like this. <laughs> Thanks to Rachel. Wow. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't let her continue with some of this stuff, but yeah, just, just that was the first and most important thing I think I learned from Rachel was like, don't just apply anything on your skin after it's got to be some certain products. Got it. Okay. And so also good. men don't like pain. So we are wimps. <laughs> when it comes to rejuvenation, it does. Men, men are wimps. Uh, you know, it's, it's so funny <laughs> because uh, um earlier in my life I remember uh, I was I had a girlfriend and she used to tell me beauty hurts. <laughs> doesn't have to i mean we can be strategic with like the dabs and the protocols but i think i think women subject i think a lot of women or a lot of people in the beauty industry do subject themselves to some things but it's it's not about taking pain for pain's sake or or these kind of things it's about doing the right thing at the right time to avoid pain i think in the long run i also think it's a receptor thing Oh, tell me more. I, I, I do actually think that there's a cell receptor thing. And if you think about it, like Katie and Wade, Katie and I have been touching our faces with like skincare and makeup for years. And guys are not really used to that, that tactile touching of someone else doing stuff to their skin. So there's, mm. there's also that too. I think it goes way deeper biologically. And I think the fact that women can childbirth, like gives us a higher threshold for pain in general. So I would like blanket it at that, like, sorry to go like way out there, but like, I just think like my pain tolerance compared to my fiance's way different. And I've always wondered that, but I really do think it stems biologically. Well, biologically that is, um, there is evidence to suggest that women have a higher pain tolerance than men. And I think the tactile piece, you know, is legitimate. For example, if you take, um, Muay Thai fighters who toughen up their shins in order, they buy, you know, starting with sticks and, or the, the, uh, fighting guys that will start with the sand and move to the the peas and the beans and gravel and then hot rocks and till their hands are capable of withstanding it. So yes, I think it's both. I know. I remember I got a, I got a facial one time. A friend of mine, she uh, took me to get this facial and then they, they started like digging into like blackheads or whatever in my skin. I was ready. I was like, okay, I'm done here. And you're never we going, going back. To I'm, 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 I'm sensing something good, something come, like something, you know, I'm going to come all, all beautiful and ready. And they're like, ah, oh, this woman is like, like ripping my face off. I'm like, ah, ah. It's like, okay, we move back up. I'm like, she's probably like snickering in the back. What a, what a pansy. No, we got to be sensitive. Like I love working with male clients. But, you know, there's ways that we can kind of like whisper to the skin first and we can talk to it and we can have the conversation. Skin whisper. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, even something like derma rolling, like it's taken my fiance uh, quite a bit of time to kind of get that practice into place. You know, I just think it's, it's something that unless you are actively like constantly thinking about your skin, putting on makeup, like really touching your skin a lot. Like it's not, I think it's kind of a secondary thing. And then what happens is you go until you're in your fifties or sixties and then you're like, help, let's reverse this. Right. But by then it's like, you it, it actually does make a lot of sense to start in your twenties and thirties with your skin, no matter, you know, what gender you are. It's just, that is kind of the time in which cells are going to start to change a little bit. And the more that you can protect and preserve the better off you're going to be in the long term. You know, it's hard to undo the damage that you've done just like sun damage. Once you've gotten that burn, then you've got to really, you know, figure out ways to heal it versus don't just, just don't get burnt. Like just go put this SPF on and be really conscious and aware of your skin and the changes that are happening before it becomes too late. Why don't we talk about some research though? We'll get there in one second because I, but I, you guys keep activating my thought process. <laughs> and so, and this kind of goes back to my first, I think that within couples, a lot of women have mindful skin practices or they're putting effort into it and they would like for their partners to do so. And their partners will put up a considerable amount of resistance um, oftentimes, or like, what do I need that for? That seems a little bit off or blah, 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 blah. How do you communicate to your partner um, some practices or how do you initiate? Do you, you, you put them through skin boot camp? Do you do gradual suggestions? Do you bribe them? Do you trick them? Do you convince them? What, how do you get your partner to take their skin seriously. I'm curious about that. I just leave my products out for my heavy and I say, Hey, sweetie, use this. And then I'll be able to tell like which one he likes by the empty container that he strategically leaves on the counter for me to then replenish. Exactly <laughs> <the counter. laughs> hmm. Maybe so. I take a little bit of a different approach and uh, this really applies to everything. My fiance and I are very data driven. And so Anytime we're starting a new protocol, whether that be skin health or a new diet or meditation, we actually do as much research as we possibly can in like the first week before we dive into it. So prior to meeting Rachel, I listened to every podcast she had. I listened to every, you know, kind of like skin expert that I trusted kind of, you know, who's done the research and I learned as much as I could. And then I had the data and the science because I feel like there's this like switch that goes off in the brain when you can justify why you're doing certain things and there's actual like quantified data to back those things. It makes you more inclined to want to do those things in the first place. Like if I, if you just told me, Hey, do use this, it's going to be great for you. I need to see the research. I need to see the data. I need to see the before and after I need to know why. And I'm like, chemical molecular level, it's going to work or I'm not going to believe it. And it's not going to stick. And that's really the basics of habit building 101. <laughs> so let's dive into some of the data that's supporting the evidence for taking good care of your skin. So Rachel, I think you were going to, you're going to hit us with some data. My, my business partner is a data guy. I'm a, I'm a intuitive kind of guy. I'm, I'm more of a, the meditative, Hey, this feels a certain way for me. I'm kind of kinesthetic in that way. And he's all like all about the data, all about that sort of stuff. And so I think there's always a balance too, but let's, let's, hit, let's hit some data points here. Let's give us, give us some data goodies. For sure. Well, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of like in between you and your business partner. Cause I, mm. I write academic papers. I'm actually on the board of a journal and a peer reviewer, but one of the really cool papers. Well, not so cool because you guys are going to know why here in a second. Uh, when we're talking about what our skin does at certain ages, we know that due to hormonal changes, especially with women between age 37, primarily to 41, we start to see a little bit of change in the estrogen and we start to see a little bit of loss of that collagen elastin. So a lot of times clients ring me up and they say, I feel like my skin's changed overnight and it's not in their head. And also women's faces change shape three changes shape three times faster what? than men's really between the ages of 50 to 60. So guys actually 
Oh my gosh. The whole like silver Fox phenomenon is just amazing. I love this, but men age differently, right? We lose fat. We lose bone. We lose collagen, elastin, soft tissue, ligaments in our faces start to like stretch out, even fascial changes, lymphatic changes, all sorts of things. But women's faces do change shape, change, change shape three times faster than men's between 50 to 60. So if you had like a twin sister, Wade, you would look better off than she would. Right. Just because of that, it's really quite fascinating. Really? And also mm-hmm. that's around menopause too. Right. Well, so, you know, here's another thing is like when I was first started getting a few wrinkles and I was like, wow, I've arrived. I've become a cool old dude. You know what I mean? I was kind of excited about it. Meanwhile, I can remember uh, my girlfriend getting a wrinkle going, ah, you know, like, oh my God. So why is that different for men and for women? Hmm. Let's think about this for a second. I don't, I feel like with women, there really are these unrealistic expectations, especially Mm. with social media that we have to look perfect all the time. Bingo. Right. So that's programming for me. I'm accepting some of my smile lines. I mean, I smile most of the time. Right. And, but sometimes there can actually be an element. So for you, you're more empathic, you're more intuitive. A lot of times we can actually hold things in our bodies that could manifest as things like frown lines between the brows, the corners of the mouth coming down. Now there are physiological things that are happening there as well, like the fat bone and soft tissue changes, but, uh, but there's, there's some deep stuff that happens uh, when certain wrinkles are forming in certain ways from doing constant facial expressions. So when you are living in a more high vibration type of state, your face is actually going to be doing different movements. It's it's quite interesting, but it's I think it's the programming. I would take it even a step further. And Rachel, you're going to be very proud of me because this gets really woo, which is typically not my style. Love woo. Let's get to I the woo. Think, I think personally, it's, it's a lot of inner self stuff and a fear of our own immortality or, you know, our fear of our mortality rather. And this idea that we're not going to live forever. The second that you start to see the signs of aging is an Mm -hmm. indication that you're getting closer and closer Mm -hmm. to end of life. And no one wants to deal with that. Right. And until you've done a lot of inner spiritual work and you've started to unpack the idea that it doesn't matter that like that timeline that we've created for ourselves, this fake timeline of, you know, our life expectancy, who cares? It's just a number. I'm just happy waking up every day and feeling this good. I think once you've dialed into that mindset, you don't care about the wrinkles and you don't notice them as much. And I think that might apply for men and women. So yes, I do think it's a combination of social media and a lot of the, the societal pressure and programming that has been instilled in us since the beginning of, you know, like time. I mean, it's gone on for, for decades, hundreds of years, but I also think it's a lot of this, this fear of we're going to die. And I don't want to even show us like that small wrinkle on my face. That's a, that's an indication that that's going to happen. That's a, it's a, a lot of spiritual um, teachers talk about that's the base of all fears. There's a mm-hmm. process that people can go at and, and then what, and then what, and then what, and when you're dealing with a difficult situation, you know, so, and then what, like, I'll, well, then I'll, people won't like me and then what? And then I'll be kicked out of work and I'll lose my job. And then what? I'll lose all my money. And then what? I'll lose my house. And then what? I'll be out on the street and then I won't have any money for food and then I'll die. It always gets at the very baseline of the stack is that then I'll die. So I think there's some truth to that. And there, but there is aging gracefully, right? There is also a perspective on aging that I'd like to encourage everyone yeah. and start to employ. And that is the concept and the perspective and the lens that actually aging is a privilege, right? The fact that we're here today, every day is our first best and last day. Do not be afraid of the aging privilege. In fact, embrace it because there are so many clients that I've met with over the last 10 and a half years of working with clients here and noticing certain clients who are thriving and the others that are just kind of like in that low vibe, they don't have the radiance, they don't have the vibrancy. And we're talking men and women, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s 
that are shining and they have more collagen in their skin, more brightness, more radiance than some of these clients that I'm seeing for the first time in their 20s and 30s. So the woo, the body, my spirit energy practices absolutely have an impact in the way that your physical meat suit shines. This is what radiance is. And this is the super deep aspect of beauty, which is why I'm here. And it's super fun to unpack. Cool. So let's, uh, let's all give a celebration for aging and let's all suggest that there are things that we can do to look great as we do age and inevitably do that. What are some other things that we need to be addressing maybe on a daily, monthly, weekly, you kind of touched on it, but it's like, you know, I know that I can't go to the weights room once a month or once a year and have a decent physique. I, there is a routine that I engage in. I know there's a routine for my fitness program. There's a routine for my spiritual program. There's a routine for my business program, my economic uh, health, financial health, any area that I don't have a routine in is an area that is usually uh, ripe for improvement. The Bioptimizer mission is to help more of the world fix their digestion at a core level. The truth is your digestion is only as good as your enzyme levels. Imagine trying to build a house with a tree. It's impossible. You need to chop the tree down into small pieces. Similarly, in order for your food to be used by your body, it must be broken down into a bioavailable form. And that's what enzymes do, converting protein into amino acids, fats into specific fatty acids, and carbohydrates into usable energy units. We start out with an abundance of enzymes, and that's why kids can digest just about anything really quickly. The thing is, is cooking food kills enzymes as they cannot survive at temperatures above 118 degrees. So years of this ends up depleting our bodies and leads to weak digestion. Taking digestive enzymes like masszymes, which has an incredibly high level of protease for digesting protein, as well as other critical enzymes like lipase, amylase, and others is a total game changer. Suddenly, you strengthen your digestion, eliminate gas and bloating, boost metabolism, and multiply your energy. Most importantly, you fix your digestion at a core level. To get started with Masszymes and to save 10% on your first order, go to Masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S dot com and use the code MASS10, M-A-S-S-1-0. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I totally agree. And it's, um, you know, I, I, I think for me, that has been meditation. Quite honestly, I haven't made the time for it. And I think that is something I'm just starting to explore. And it's exciting me so much. I know you obviously have a very strong meditation and kind of spiritual routine and you do too, Rachel, but it's been something I've kind of pushed aside for a long time because I was focused on all the other things until the moment hit where I was like, I'm not happy. Like mm. at my core, I'm in living in paradise. I live in on Hawaii. I am doing the job that I had dreamed of doing. I'm talking to all these amazing people, but there's something deeper. And I think it comes back to this fear of mortality about leaving a legacy, about all these things, you know, complete with everything going on in the world. Right. And so I think mentally, I was like, I need to get a grip on this. I need to figure out what's actually going on deep inside. So that's where I started. And, um, and I'm, I'm really just like diving down the, the rabbit hole with that right now. And yeah, I think like that, that the spiritual stuff is what I put on the sidelines for the longest time when I started quote unquote biohacking. And do I regret it? No, because I needed to learn everything else. But I think it's like so important to be self-aware that you don't have to do the same exact thing all the time and expect the same exact result. Like you, your body is going to change, right? Like you're going to age. Your mind is also going to change. And I think that is really where people need to kind of dial in and say, well, how am I feeling? And am I really happy here? And what do I need to do to change that or improve? I would agree with you on that. Um, you know, the cultivation of heart wisdom is uh, an ex uh, extraordinary and untapped component of biohacking. I think a lot of biohackers out there are concerned about their sleep data or do they have sufficient levels of B12 
And do they have the right fat to deliver their nootropic stack into their cognitive enhancement so that they can get a 13.7% improvement in productivity? Mm -hmm. But none of those factors actually lead to the ultimate aspect, which is, am I okay with me and my role in the universe and, and how deeply connected? And all of those things are only enhanced, I think, in value when one has that relationship with, with, with self. And that self with a capital S, not a small S, like, hey, me, Wade, that guy, the, the, the meat suit, the temporary meat suit for a reflected piece of consciousness, you know, um, when you go to the ultimate and you see self as everything, then everything is fun. Everything is meaning. Everything has merit. But going back to the skin thing is oh, I want to get a routine. I don't have a routine. I don't have a skin routine, ladies. I'm suffering. I'm fading away. I'm terrified with my aging and wrinkles that are exploding all over the place. What am I to do? How am I <laughs> going to survive? Please, please help me. One of the things I notice with clients is they'll, they'll usually reach out when something's been bothering them for a while. So if say, for example, some fine lines, jawline laxity, hooded upper eyelids, lower eye bags, low brows are starting to bother you. Get some customized guidance, but the free stuff online just just your 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 warrant. But the whole concept about a rejuvenation routine, my rejuvenation routine changed dramatically for the better once I met Dave Asprey and understood this whole biohacking concept. So as a traditionally trained registered nurse, now double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist implementing biohacking into my rejuvenation routine has made it more efficient, more effective, and a lot more fun. You mentioned the word fun. And, you know, yes. part of my rejuvenation routine is actually getting into the woods three hours, hours out of Wi-Fi in my four by vehicle. I have fun. I do my cold water therapy. I drink and wash myself with structured water. I'm getting this exchange of this you know, beautiful biome around me and, and improving my, my skin's microbiome. But the thing about uh, biohackers is you've heard of spiritual bypassing, right? It's like we can pray our way out of the situation, right? But And biohackers, I think, are looking at doing the same thing. We're looking at hacking aging. So when you kind of blend these two worlds of beauty and biohacking, trust me, I'm going to be pulling a Jane Fonda without the three facelifts. Join us, all of us, Wade, Katie, and I, on th the journey that we're taking together. But the rejuvenation routine, let's just get into the nuts and bolts of it for a second. It's what you do every single day, right? So yeah. when I'm talking with clients, it's not just about like, why would you show up to a clinic to do your microneedling once a month when you can also do it at home? It's like biohacking. You're not just going to biohack once a month. It's all about the daily stacks that you like to do that bring you joy that you get the results from, which you can check with your metrics on your tracking devices and all of that. So it's what you do at home with your skincare, incorporating some really cool at-home options like at-home chemical peels, sometimes even once a month. There's great technology and devices that you can use to allow your peptides to penetrate into the dermal layer via the mechanism of opening up different um, cell gated channels in the skin. That's really cool stuff. Um, there's research back devices I work with, but seasonally there's rejuvenation treatments that we can do. So fall winter, we can undo some of the sun damage from the sun because y'all should be getting your unadulterated source energy from the sunlight uh, in the summertime, but, you know, taking the fall winter as the time to undo that uh, is really great. So there's lasers that uh, when we're talking about face, neck, chest, and then off the face, um, the different lasers and the energies need to be modulated depending on which body part we're working on. If the target's pigment or if we're wanting to promote more collagen or elastin, that's a whole other rabbit hole. But uh, yes, the rejuvenation routine incorporates a heck of a lot of biohacking now, in my opinion. Okay, so what is the rejuvenation company or where do they get it or how do they find out more about what they need to do on a day to day basis? Do you, and do you break it down like, so for example, if I'm constructing a, a diet and training program for a person to achieve an aesthetic idea, we'll, we'll, we'll do an assessment of where they're at. And then they'll say, I want to look like this. 
And then I'll construct a working backwards program from the end goal to the present and construct a, a daily regimen, both diet and maybe biohacking wise and fitness wise, depending on how much time, effort and energy they're going to encompass. Is that what you guys kind of do with the skin thing is like you build a skin habits, routines, technology, and what would something like that look for, look like, or where would they go for that? So this is how Katie and I work so well together, right? So clients will book their one-on-one with me to have me be their guide to give them their at-home skincare protocol based on what their specific needs are, budget, lifestyle, all of that. And then I'll kind of, uh, I, I, it's a whole, it's a whole process with working with me one-on-one. There's a lot included in the service. Then there's, uh, I have seasonal skin camps, which are really fun. So clients can work with me in the group setting and I keep everybody, okay, this is the time of year to focus on this. This is what you need to do for this. This is the proximate recovery, downtime, all the nuances, all the nuts and bolts. And then for my clients, I love for them to reach out to, to Katie for helping them optimize their, their biohacking stuff. So it's really fun working together on this. Yeah. I also want to just point out one last thing that really blew my mind when I first started talking and working with Rachel is you have to wear SPF on your face, even indoors. And you're probably wondering why. And it's because of the blue light that's actually coming from our devices is penetrating deep within the dermal layer of the skin. Three times deeper than the UVA, UVB we get outside. I know. And it's fascinating because you, you don't really think about it when you're inside and you know it's, or it's raining out. Like I'm not, I, I'll skip my SPF for the day. No, like that, that's really kind of going to help you with the aging process as well to age more gracefully wearing a light layer of SPF. That's hopefully mineral based and doing that indoors and outdoors every 365. Okay. So what about people who are like, Ladies, sounds great, but you know what? I want to look like I went through a wind tunnel at 60 miles an hour. When would somebody use cosmetic surgery? Are you against cosmetic surgery? Is there, if you are for it, is there things that you can do beforehand after all that sort of stuff? Because that's a huge industry and a huge question. Absolutely. So what I, the, the kind of like process that I do with my clients is just listening to what their specific skin goals are, what their comfort levels are as well. So yes, non-surgical surgical options have a place, but it depends on all of those aspects. But I always like to recommend to start with your at-home skincare, incorporate some of these skin treatments, right? Skin boosters, laser rejuvenation using, for example, intense pulse light. Not That's not good for all skin types. So I do have to be careful with making blanket statements. It's different for everybody's needs, really. And then there's erbium lasers that actually vaporizes the top layer of the skin off. It's attracted to the water and almost like heats it up and comes off in a plume. It's, it's really cool, but it's like bulldozer meets Zamboni for the skin. And that's incredible. That is like a controlled injury for the skin to create more glassiness. It's uh, it does require some downtime. So I walk my clients through that too, especially for guys, you don't want to have a treatment and be red for three days. And you weren't planning on that. And a lot of clinics to be totally honest, they're not honest about this stuff. And I work with a lot of, um, you know, CEOs, tech mogul celebrities, and that has to be worked into the social calendar. Trust me. Otherwise they wouldn't be thrilled with working with me. It's like, I help them plan it all All out. Quick interrupt. I had a, I had, um, an assistant who got a treatment at a laser clinic, or I think it was, and she got lasered for her skin, like, and they're going through this and she's like, yeah, I might look a little bit. The next day she showed up on zoom and her face was like, so it looked like she got hit by a freight train. It was like, Oh my God. Like, and she's like, don't worry. They told me I'm going to look better. It's going to like heal up in a few days or whatever. And I was just like, well, I, I, awkward, I, right. It's like, well, at least you can plan socially. Well, yeah. I, but I didn't know, like, I had no idea that the initial damage or the, from this, the, some of these treatments is significant and that you needed to plan for it. I had no idea. 
but there's no, also a lot of garbage technology on the market. I'm just going to say that right now. There's yeah. probably only three lasers that I would actually trust for myself, my family, and my clients. Just because a clinic offers something doesn't mean it's good. And in mm-hmm. fact, in the rejuvenation space, lasers actually carry the highest uh, liability in regards to lawsuits. So you have to make sure you're going to somebody who knows what they're doing. They're going to skin type you properly. They're using top notch tech. We're talking like $160,000 lasers. And a lot of clinics, they'll just buy like actually counterfeit lasers online for like 30 grand. But this is, that's really important for you guys to know that the quality of technology matters and also the attention to detail of the provider offering it. So I have a really amazing um, network that I pull from. But when you were mentioning things like, uh, for example, other non-surgical options like injectables, that really is one of the last things I want to recommend. You want to focus on skin health first and then that stuff for what's left over. But things like rhinoplasties, upper or lower eyelid surgeries, those are the most common surgeries, um, aesthetic surgeries performed, but there's specific surgeons that I'll recommend for those type of surgeries because they need to be done so precisely. So there's that element as well, because if too much tissue is taken out from the upper or lower eyelid skin, you actually could have dysfunction of your eyes and uh, actually not have your eyes be able to close properly. So there's so much to know. And the concept of let's pull the skin back. Like we've been in a wind tunnel. If I had like a penny for every time someone has said that to me, Uh, but you also don't want to be, you know, that woman in in their sixties at the dinner table with not a wrinkle or an imperfection on the skin. So there's a bit of like, I definitely uh, don't want to be that woman. Yeah. It's, it's a balance. (laughs) (laughs) It's a dude joke. (laughs) Don't be that woman. Yeah. But you also don't want to be that guy that's looking like hyper feminine, right? Because we are seeing a rise of low testosterone, high estrogen in men. So for me, when I look like, when I look at a man, I want to see like some rugged qualities. Like sometimes a little bit of scruff is nice. If, if my husband's skin was better than my skin, I I actually probably wouldn't find that attractive to be completely honest. (laughs) That's That's hilarious. We were actually out for dinner recently and um, I do a lot of anti-aging practices that, you know, Rachel's recommended. My fiance gets carded for a diet Coke. Okay. Mind you, he is in his mid thirties and uh, we're almost the same age. And then the waiter kept coming up to him multiple times and saying, wait, what do you really do for your skin? Like, I- I'm curious, like, how, how do you look so good? Like you look so young. I thought you were in college and I'm sitting there being like, guys, do you, no, no, I, I do a lot for my skin. And it, you know, it was, we, it was a running joke, but yeah, I mean, I think he's, he definitely like, it's partly genetic, but he just has really well lubricated skin, takes good care of it, uses all of the products that I also use, but maybe he just doesn't tell me. And, and as a result, and he's also like one of the most dialed in people I've ever met. Like he is, he's just got everything kind of together. And I think that's also being reflected in his skin and the kind of the glowiness. He's just a really happy person. So there's, there's so many different factors, but yes, I agree with you, Rachel. It's kind of like a little intimidating when you're out and your, you know, fiance of the same age gets, you know, super complimented and you're just, you know, so I, I hear you. I'm like, you should just look a little older. How about that? <laughs> it is that will happen at some point. Mm-hmm. So, um, so routines, we're, we're trying to, we're circling the wagons here. I want to get down to some basic practices for people that they need to incorporate. And they can find all this stuff, I believe, at your site. It's at beautyandthebiohacker.com. Yep. So and then I... To. So what are, what, are the, what are those things that you're going to teach them? Well, why don't we just go through what we both do in a day? Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love that. Kitty, you start. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, I mean, first off, I get up. Uh, no, I'm not going to go into all those details, but I think like some, I'll talk about some key fundamentals of what I do every single day. Start off with drinking some really clean water. We have a reverse osmosis, like filtration system. Use that water, usually add some minerals. I do take enzymes, a probiotic. I kind of like focus on gut health as well. First thing in the morning, then, you know, I do a meditation, probably 20 minutes, get outside and get sunlight in my eyes. First thing like that is, I cannot express to you how much that has changed my life, but 
being able to walk outside and literally turn off that melatonin production, that secretion, you know, I think that's so important. And if you guys get up really early, which sometimes I do, I think sometimes supplementing with like a juve device, getting some red light, um, just in your space and on your skin first thing can also be beneficial as like a precursor to getting the natural sunlight. I always say though, there's such power in that wakes you up, do a little bit of grounding, come back. I usually work. I'm pretty sedentary throughout the day. So I set little like reminders for myself to get up and stretch and move around and then like my evening routine is really fun. It's, it's, I have an infrared sauna. So I usually do a sauna. Sometimes we have, um, if we do go to Costco and get, you know, 300 pounds of ice, I'll do an ice bath. Uh, it's a little bit more to set up, but otherwise you do a cold shower, usually do kind of another wind down sleep hypnosis track, which I'm really getting into or another meditation. And, and then I, you know, this is also with like, you know, adding food and everything else that happens midday. and then get into bed and I usually like phones off. I have my blue blockers glasses on. Everything is dim. We have red hue bulbs. So everything is kind of like, it looks sort of like a brothel here because it's all red light in our whole house. But that's, that's usually my wind down routine. I love my eight sleep. So I usually set that to like the coldest setting possible because we do live in Hawaii and it's really hot. And that's, that's kind of how I, you know, spend my days. In a nutshell, I mean, I left a lot of stuff out, but you know, I think those are kind of the basics. All right, yeah, I was taking some notes here. Yeah, you want to <laughs> you want to follow up there? Yeah, because I've taken some notes out of Katie's playbook into my routine as well. So you're going to hear some like really cool overlaps here. But I was taking some notes, so I didn't forget anything here. So my current routine is: I wake up to my mattress vibrating. All right. Mm -hmm. And that definitely wakes me up. And I have to say with my mattress cover, it's on like the hottest setting because I'm in Canada. (laughs) Way to make me envious, Katie. Like, (laughs) but you uh, know, it's, you're supposed to sleep a little bit colder, right? Like you can set it to go. Okay. All right. If you need me to walk you through it after we can do it. (laughs) It's not actually at 10 on the scale. It's more like right now, like jumps down to about five to three. Right. Trust me, that's all that that is optimist. I'm glad you cut that. So then I, you know, want to wake up and like kiss and cuddle with my hubby, get some of that. Like, I want to have some of his testosterone from his saliva, please. Like, I I love having lots of testosterone in my body because it makes me feel good, but not too much, so I don't get too hairy. And then I start with a prayer meditation. I do have like a particular protecting practice that I employ. Lay, Wade, I'm sure you know about this as uh, your last name is Lightheart. So I'm sure you're a light worker. So when we're, when we shine super bright, there are things that we have to make sure are cleared out and we're protected and all of that. And also I like to remember my dreams. So I'll spend a few moments before I wake up. What did I dream about? Cause sometimes I have some crazy dreams and no, it's not from mold. It's uh, I just have always had really, really interesting dreams. And then I'll have synchronicities throughout the day that I'll recognize. And then I try not to look at my phone, but you know, sometimes I break down. I'm only human too. But the thing that I've noticed is that if I've woken up in a good state and I look at my phone and I have something from the 3D that's just blasted in my face, and it's like it's I don't need to deal with other people's stuff right now. Let me have my morning routine first, please. So then I make my coffee that's filtered water. I have reverse osmosis in my home. I don't use anything plastic, uh, so I make sure that the kettle is uh, just metal and obviously good coffee. We don't need to dive into that because that's a given. And then I'll have my collagen with it. Then I'll get ready with my red light therapy. I have my red light therapies actually in my bathroom with me because that's when I'm going to be naked, get ready, right? Bathing and all of that, because you want that full body exposure morning. And I use my red light therapy and I'll get ready with my red light. So I'll, I'll either stand behind or in front of the panel to get my legs and have it on my face when I'm doing like my dermal rolling practices. That's how I get that in. I feel like singing Jimi Hendrix is a red house over young yeah. day. Yeah, I mean, I got my gifts in Les Paul here. I could buy a That's where a my biohacker lives. <laughs> 
And then bathing with magnesium, right? We were talking about your magnesium breakthrough. I love that to sleep, but I also love soaking in magnesium, Mm. unscented magnesium. I'll throw some baking soda in there too. Some of my favorite like sage style, very clearing essential oils. Then I'll do my skincare in there. I'll put some bath oil in there too. So that when I emerge from the bathtub, I am hydrated head to toe goddess style. And then I'll do my skincare before touching everything in the bathroom, keep my hands nice and clean. Whatever I do to my face, I do to my neck, chest, hands as well. Then I'll do my makeup and then I'll be sipping on my coffee through all that. Then I'll take my coffee outside, plant my feet on the ground, get at least five minutes of grounding, getting in that natural sunlight into my eyes to start with the all that uh, circadian rhythm, melatonin balancing, all of that. So that's what a morning looks like for me. Out of curiosity, Rachel, when do you get up if you can take a bath and do all this stuff? Like, I find that I, I'm just like jumping out of bed and I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, like I'm a little like cortisol heavy in the morning. Or I'm like, well, I gotta get run outside. I gotta come back. I gotta meditate. You know, like I'm like, I'm a little frenzied. You sound like, like you just like, I don't know, like magically wake up at like four and everything is sort of like somebody's like doing the water for you in the bath. And it like, sounds so glamorous. Like I want that. <laughs> Well, this is actually a really good segue into maybe why all of us have gone into biohacking. So I got into biohacking pretty extensively a couple of years ago because I was in a pretty bad car accident. I was dealing with whiplash, sprained ribs, concussion, a lot of pain, a lot of headaches. So that's why I was doing so much cold therapy is is nervous system regulation because I said, no, I'm not going to go on medications to reduce this nervous system like hit that I feel like I've had. So that's, that's actually kind of when we met a little bit after that, Katie. So you really helped me support my body in the way that the traditional medical system wasn't telling me to support it. And so this is how I've been able to navigate that. I don't take appointments before 10 AM actually. Uh, So I ways to reduce my stress because I've had to, after all of that for my brain health, I've, I've had to make my days a little bit more uh, flowy, less stressful. I don't do as much in a day that I used to, but this is also a concept of programming. Why do we have to live our lives in a certain way? Why can't we create the life that we want? I agree with that. I, I don't take clients before 9 a.m. And, you know, having a company that's all over the world, uh, there was a period of time where I was living in Bali and um, I was you know, up at two, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning running my business. And I was running a couple other businesses and really burnt myself out, set myself into a component that wasn't good. And I, I came to recognize is like, you know what, if I don't claim my time, the world will. And so someone says, well, I don't have time to do all these different things. Well, maybe you ought to rethink your life because it's dwindling away relatively quickly or, you know, it goes by fast. Any other things you want to add to that, Katie? And I would just say it's amazing how you can be so like obsessed about time. And then the second that you turn off that switch and you say, I'm going to make time for this thing, this thing is important. You all of a sudden have endless time. Like Mm -hmm. I am literally doing three different online courses, trying to get a, you know, a couple of videos out a week, doing multiple podcasts. I'm planning a biohacking retreats for some friends in Austin, another, like, you know, I'm doing so much more. And I'm like, how is this all like, it's just almost like the, the universe sort of is like now kind of working with you, not against you in some way. And so I always tell people if you, if it's important to you, you will find a way to make the time for it plain and simple. If it's not, you're going to waste your time. So that, that being said, um, you know, I, I do kind of like agree with Rachel and, and kind of the, the impetus for what led us to biohacking. I think anybody who starts to kind of go down this road of like, I'm going to listen to my body or I'm going to start doing things to improve my life. That maybe is not what Western medicine is telling me to do. I think it starts with just a some type of low point in your life, maybe an accident, a physical or a mental low point. And I think once you are willing to accept new ideas and try them and it works, that's sort of the, the kind of like the classic biohacker story. And that certainly applies to me too. I was actually fired from a job 
believe it or not. And I'm a type A perfectionist. So you can just imagine what this did to my psyche. I was fired, by the way, because I was so stressed and I wasn't bringing my A game because I was bringing all this heaviness and sadness and stress to the job. So it was a blessing now that I think about it. But I was starting a new job and I was like, well, I can't F this one up. So I got to get to be the smartest version of myself because really it's my brain that's lacking, right? Like I didn't even think about my adrenals. So I listened to Dave Asprey's podcast about nootropics and racetams and all of these different things. And I was like, that's it. That's it. I'm going to try it. So I did. And like half of it was placebo, but the other part was like discovering a new way to even think about my relationship to food. I was always fat phobic. Like in the nineties, you're like, don't eat fat. Like it's going to make you fat. And then Dave comes in and is like, no guys, this is a lie. Like try this. I tried Bulletproof. I was like, how am I feeling so good? This is insane. And so it's like the, once you let yourself open up those floodgates and say, I'm going to just try it once and see that's when the magic happens. And that's when you go down this rabbit hole. And now four years into it, I, I absolutely still love and talk about biohacking all the time. My perspective has shifted a little bit in terms of what I'm focusing on. It's not as much my brain health. I kind of got that dialed in, not as much my stress. I kind of got that dialed in. Now it's more this like internal spiritual, like where do I belong in the world sort of thing that I'm now focusing on. So I think the excitement is that it's always changing and there's always ways to evolve. Wow. That was really long-winded. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Oh, good. That was I, my I, life story. Thank you very much for listening. I, I hope you enjoyed my TED talk. <laughs> Where can people reach you, find out more, get into their skin? Um, how do they get, like, what's all the social media handles, links, websites? Uh, go for it. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'll drop those in a sec. But I wanted to add to what Katie said, because I think this is a really important message for your, for your audience here, Wade. And really, we must learn how to modulate our stress for more beauty and radiant longevity. It's not just living until we're 150 to 200 years. We want to do it in a high vibe, radiant way. Look our best, feel our best. And personally, I'm also in preconception phase. So I'm actively supporting myself for not only my needs, my needs, but also my future lineage, children and beyond. And when we are taking this self-care journey and learning how to modulate it for our body, mind, spirit, energy, for our highest good, it's also going to impact the highest good of those around you too. So it's, oh, you know, what are you doing to look after your skin? Wade, why do you look so amazing at 50? It has this trickle down effect to those that we care about and love the most. So it's not as selfish as you might think. And don't wear that badge of busyness, everybody. That's just really what I wanted to uh, share here. And everybody can learn more about us at beautyandthebiohacker.com. Tune into our podcast, The Beauty and the Biohacker. And uh, Katie has her own YouTube channel, the Katie Taifei YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And then I also have uh, another podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast. But uh, yeah, Beauty and the Biohacker, Rachel Varga official, Katie Type A stay in the loop with all of us. We're here to support you and take this journey with you all. Well, ladies, thanks for joining us today. I hope our listeners got some relevant tips. And for guys like myself, I am more motivated than ever to try some of these skin experiments. And I will be reporting back as we connect up at one of the events or online again. Let's do a one-on-one, Wade. I'm happy to. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, So for everyone else, uh, check out Rachel and Katie's podcast, book yourself a one-on-one, find out what you can learn and avoid making costly mistakes that will have you aging much faster than you need to. So thank you everyone for joining us today on Bioptimizers, the awesome health show. I'm Waitie Lightheart. God bless you and keep the faith because you are worth it. Take care or lots of love. And now for a Bioptimizers fixed digestion tip. Turn cultured foods into superfoods. Raw fermented foods like sauerkraut and low sugar live yogurt can be good for you, but rarely have enough of the right probiotic strains for therapeutic benefit. So here's a way that you can turn them into superfoods. What I do is I get some raw sauerkraut or a healthy yogurt. Ideally, you know, it's grass fed or coconut based, and you can empty three caps of P3OM into a container and mix it up thoroughly. 
leave it at room temperature for a couple of hours before putting it back into the fridge. And what's going to happen is these probiotic levels will be multiplied. In fact, it doubles every 20 minutes. And then what you're going to get is you're going to have a food with strong proteolytic activity. To learn more about P3OM and why its patented strains make it the strongest probiotic available, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizers Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com.